Hey there friends. A couple of weeks ago I posted a video about an introduction to SLOID and what the guiding principles are and how we can use SLOID to help children develop their mental uh, abilities through the use of physical labor. So uh, I want to continue that conversation, talk a little bit about the aims of SLOID and what do we hope to achieve. Up to now, this conversation has really been more academic or even philosophical, thinking about how best to introduce children to woodworking and getting them to, to use their hands. Uh, I do hope that this is going to turn into a practical uh, experience, practical exercise, and, and move beyond just the, the uh, academic, if you will, and, and really start to think about how this might benefit local children um, in terms of getting them uh, accustomed to using their hands uh, in woodworking. So aim number one is to instill a love of labor. Uh, keep in mind that when this book was written in 1892, there was a rapid industrialization going on and uh, families were moving off the farm into the cities and they were transitioning from using homemade goods to using factory produced or industrial goods. And they were really losing that connection with some of their heritage and their hands. And uh, you know, people were being taught often in schools or being prepared in schools to go into some type of industrial trade. Uh, so they were preparing them for factory work not for skilled trades work. So uh, one of the things that uh, Ottoman uh, Solomon was Otto Solomon was trying to do was get children to realize that that working really was a, a good thing, even if it is not a trade um, or a skill that uh, you can enjoy working with your hands uh, just for the sheer pleasure of it. Aim number two is to instill a respect for honest labor. Even back at that time, they were starting to transition away from uh, a respect for the people that did uh, kind of trades work or, or honest work. And, and uh, what, what Solomon, uh, Otto Solomon was trying to do here was, was uh, you know, generate a respect for those people that can do this type of honest work. Um, even today, you know, we are pushing kids into college. Uh, we are pushing them into more technical or professional type uh, jobs, but we still need people that can fix things and we need people that can do things, uh, referred to as the trades. Uh, and even if our children are not going into the trades, I think it is good that we give them a respect for those that do so that uh, we can encourage certain uh, individuals that, that like that kind of work, that it's, it's okay to be in the trades and do honest labor. Aim number three is to develop a sense of self-reliance and independence. Uh, part of the Sloyd method, uh, which we'll talk about in more detail later, is uh, individual accomplishment, uh, not necessarily groupthink or group activities. Even though Sloyd can happen in a class environment, it is really about the individual, and you need to have individual instruction and individual accomplishment. Uh, we, we see a lot of cases where Parents, um, and, and we've all been guilty of it, uh, but parents tend to do too much for their children. Um, and if you take that to an extreme, you can handicap your child um, and make them feel like they're not able to do anything. But Sloyd, by focusing on what the child is capable of doing, helps demonstrate to them that yes, they can do the work and um, they can accomplish things. Aim number four 
Aim number four is to train in a sense of order. When you are working in a group environment, whether it's any type of manufacturing or even a um, co-working space, uh, you, you can't depend on your own or, or you can't really tolerate your own method of organization because if you're sharing tools or sharing equipment, you really need to have a sense of order. And working in a sloyd environment, uh, really any, any woodworking or, or workshop, uh, tools really should go back into their, their place where they belong. Um, it protects the tool. It also makes it available the next time the, the tool is needed. You don't have to hunt for it. You can quickly grab it. So working in a sloyd environment really does help the children or help the children know that uh, there is an order to things and, and, and things should go back in their place. Okay. The next aim of Sloyd is to train the eye to the sense of form. Um, I also, I add in perspective as well. Uh, Solomon just uses the term form. As we are making projects, uh, especially we as woodworkers, uh, we love to give our stuff away. Uh, we love to give them as presents. So if we are making something as a present for somebody else, of course, it should be our own design and our own sense of, of form, but that, that sense of form does need to be pleasing to others. When people look at it, there should be a sense that it, it is the right perspective and it's the right dimensions and, and things like that. So Sloyd does help train the children early on into a sense of form uh, so that as they are building their models and, and building their projects, they can build them uh, and, and make them um, look pleasing to the eye. All right, the next one is, is something that I certainly could have benefited from early on. And that is to develop a sense of patience and perseverance. Um, I, it, especially when it comes to woodworking, and, and I've mentioned this in some of my previous videos, that, that I, I tend to get impatient and I tend to cut corners a little bit. And if you're going to be a woodworker, particularly using hand tools, it does take a lot of patience. Um, tasks that could be accomplished within a matter of seconds on the table saw uh, now take several minutes and physical exertion to do with hand tools. The, the results can be just, just as good. You know, a, a talented hand tool woodworker can produce furniture and joints uh, every bit as good as uh, a machine. But you need uh, the patience and the perseverance. You, you can't cut corners. Um, you know, we all know that when, uh, you know, the, the boards aren't square, there you end up with gaps and things like that. So you need to take your time to get that done. Um, so that's a lesson that I am learning now as a hand tool woodworker that uh, patience is really the key to good results. Next on the list of the aims is to provide for the physical development of the body. One of the key guiding principles of, of Sloyd is that mental development goes hand in hand with physical development. Um, I think you see this a lot in the sports world as well. Um, children who participate in sports tend to do better in, in some of the academic areas as well, um, especially when it, I think it's individual type sports. Um, it's, so woodworking accomplishes a lot of the same thing or any of the Sloyd crafts by teaching a child the, the elements of woodworking and the, the hand and eye coordination and the the muscle memory and things like that, that it does actually trigger benefits in um, mental awareness and mental development. So developing the physical body, the ultimate goal is really to help develop the mind. So the, the first grouping of aims is what 
Otto Salomon calls the, the general aims of, of Sloyd. The next two are specific. Uh, and, and what that means is they are specific to woodworking in, in particular. Uh, it could be applied to the other crafts, but it, it is really more for building the skills themselves. So the, the next aim is to uh, promote dexterity or the use of tools. So in particular, how to you know, use the chisels and planes and things like that. So uh, very specifically, Sloyd does teach how to use the tools that are in the Sloyd toolbox or tool chest um, and train the child in the exercises and the use of the tools and, and makes them more proficient. The more proficient they are with their tools, the better they're able to execute the, the projects and uh, in turn uh, generate good results. All right, the last aim of Sloyd is to execute good work or exact work. Uh, again, going back to the example of, of boards that aren't properly squared off, we know that leads to gaps uh, in the joints. Um, you know, dimensions that aren't right can, can make it look out of balance and things like that. So, again, as we think about Sloyd, we are not comparing child against child. We are comparing the child against itself and what the, the child is capable of doing. Uh, and as long as the, the, the child is doing their best work and they are being as exact as they can, um, the, the results will, will follow and, and the, it's going to end up being a good project. And this does really teach the child that being exact in their work or being careful in their work does provide for better results. Well, I appreciate you sticking to the end of the video here, um, talking about the aims of Sloyd um, and how I, I think this is really relevant to us today. Um, even though this, this book was written in 1892, uh, the methods had been around a little bit before that, but the book was written in 1892 with a, a real concern about the children um, moving away from the the physicalness of, of uh, labor and work and and become just too reliant on mechanics. Um, and that, that certainly applies today with the, the world of technology and, and how kids could easily be engrossed with video games or other uh, forms of, of technology rather than enjoying the, the physical aspects of, of some of the works. So, um, Again, this, as I said at the beginning, this is this is really more of an, an academic type exercise, but uh, there's no point in academics or uh, philosophical discussions unless it really turns into some kind of practical application. So I'm really curious as to where this, this interest I have in developing the, the Sloyd or learning about the Sloyd and, and how that can apply today um, is, is really, uh, is really going to play out and how can we use that to benefit today's children? Now, one of the things that, that, uh, Otto Solomon talked about in his guiding principles is that it really has to be relevant to the child. So a lot of the, the Sloyd models or projects that are, are in the books, um, really were relevant to kids at that age. And, and there's some some terms and some projects that, that are being used that I, I don't even know what they mean, let alone how they're relevant to today. So, so the projects themselves are, are probably gonna need some altering, updating, um, making them relevant and interesting to children. But the, the concepts I, I think are timeless. Um, you know, children using their hands to develop their minds. Um, developing a sense of order and exactness and, and things like that. So well, that's, that's my thoughts on the aims of Floyd. I am very interested in uh, what everyone else has to say. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? 
that that's okay. Uh, we can disagree about these things. Um, do you have experience? Do you, do you know um, other activities? There, there's a couple of schools out there that, that are doing this, so uh, I'm kind of following along with some of their work. But I, I'm really interested in hearing what uh, other people have to say about this. So do me a favor, drop me a comment down below. Uh, if you missed the first video, I am going to put a link to it uh, so you can go back and, and hear about the guiding principles. And uh, here in another week or so, we'll, we'll have another one of these conversations and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the methods of slowing. So until then, take care. God bless.